man, what is wrong, old girl? You are, you got the drips. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flat Thunder channel. My name's Andy, and this is where the whole channel started. The 843 Bobcat. She's always had some leaks, but they're starting to become a little bit more significant than they were when we originally repaired this uh, skid steer. She's starting to consume a lot of hydraulic oil and it's just getting hard to maintain, not to mention creates a pretty nasty mess on the floor. Let's get inside this engine compartment and see what we can find. Whoopsie. Well, my pretty white paint is pretty well crusted up and unfortunately We've used this skid loader quite a bit to the point where all the oil just kind of sloshes around in this engine bay and goes everywhere. So I don't know if I can really identify a positive leak spot or point. Um, I think it gets down inside the uh, fan housing uh, right on the flywheel and just blows it everywhere. And then as you're driving it, it rolls around everywhere. So I think what we're going to do is try to fire this old girl up and look for visible leaks or oil gushing from any particular area. I mean, she's pretty messy in there. One good sign though is if you see clean areas like that where the white paint is exposed again, that probably means there's a good amount of oil, a clean oil running through this area. Like over here, it's all dirty and crusty still. It kind of makes me think there's no oil running around, just kind of sitting there and collecting dirt and dust. But over here, you can see it's white again. Let's go take a look underneath the uh, cab. Oh, oh, she's heavy. A little difficult to do one-handed. She's up. Let's get down in here and see if we can't find out where the major leak's at. So she's still sitting, you know, not running right now. We're just looking for any telltale signs. <clears throat> I don't see anything glaringly obvious at this point in time. I do see here, this, you see how that housing's all clean? Everything else in here is kind of coated with some oil and dirt and crust. Pretty sure we're gonna have a leak here. Replace that case drain hose over on this side last year. But, uh, other than this area right here, I don't see anything overly obvious. Let's uh, get her fired up and see if we can't pinpoint anything. Obviously, you got to leak this bad. You want to check the fluid, make sure she's got some in there. Oh, yeah. Good to go.
I think we found it. See that steady stream right there? Pretty sure that's our leak. And it looks like that hose might have just blew right there, but that, that steady stream right there is definitely our leak. And I believe that's associated with the vertical lift of the bucket. So let's get that, get that hose out of there. We got a leaker! We got a leaker! Our original assumption was correct. Wherever the clean spot in the engine bay was where uh, all the dirt and grime was getting washed out was the source of our leak, or at least the general vicinity of the uh, hydraulic oil leak. And it looks like it's uh, for the lift cylinders. So let's get in there, see if we can get that hose off and uh, get it to stop leaking all over. That would be awesome. Uh, uh. In there a little better. Um, important point to note, don't touch pressurized hydraulic lines because you can get oil injection. So you never want to reach around and feel for leaks. The way we found this one was just a visual. Obviously have our glasses on, so we're safe there, but you never want to grab that. Oh, what's the chances this is going to be a knuckle buster? Uh, okay. Owie. She goes under the engine and over here to this other fitting. That's a hose on a hose. That's uh, not going to be too handy. Placement, I believe that was a metal line that went from the left to the right. Probably wore out and rub a hole, rubbed a hole in itself. But uh, this right here is going to be real tricky because that's two hoses. So we're going to have to get two wrenches in there. Knuckle Buster 9000. Come on. Come on. Come on, baby. Ah. Woo. All right, let's get that hose out of there. So right there, that's definitely a worse. Right there. Right there. Can you see what I'm looking at? I don't know. Right there, that's definitely the source of the leak. Blown out there where she bends. It's got really hard. And it's got oil over my pants. So, we're gonna need to get a whole new one of these. We're gonna need to get a whole new one of these made up tomorrow. This is a perfect opportunity to try out my super clean floor absorbent. Uh, basically oil dry. We got oil all over here. Let's give this a try. Remnants of sawdust. Oh, yeah. You know, a smart person probably would have picked up that hose first. There we go. Get our money's worth out of that. I'm going to take some of my pig mat that you've seen me use in other videos. Put it down inside here. Try to help clean up this mess a little bit. This outer casing on this side is completely worn through. Uh, that's from moving around in there. And it probably uh, should be clamped. Clamped down and secured when we put it back in. Bobcat comes with a special feature not found on very many other Bobcats. It's the special auto deflating rear tire. This special feature allows all the oil to come back to this right rear corner and drain out here. So in the future, all we have to do is put a catch pan, piece of cardboard, oil dry, something right there, problem solved. Let's get in there and get that new hose on.
super clean floor absorbent. Seemed to work pretty good. Uh, the nice part is it actually absorbs pretty fast. Uh, you know, the standard kitty litter clay stuff, you gotta kinda grind into the, to the oil spill, but this just uh, leaving it sit overnight and then dusting it around seemed to, seemed to work pretty good. It looks almost just like uh, fine chunks of wood chips. Um, kinda like to compare that just to straight sawdust, see, see the comparison is. Picked up new hose today. We're gonna get in here and get this all installed. And we'll talk to you after we get her all buttoned up. I hope everything works and it goes back in the same way it came out. Less the battle wounds. skid loaders and tight spaces. I gotta say, if that's the biggest leak that we have to fix on this this year, man, that's gonna be really handy because it was relatively easy to access back here on the backside. Uh, didn't have to like cram ourselves on our head inside there or anything. Uh, <clears throat> I wanna take you off of there and show you what this pig mat did to this uh, engine bay. Take a look at this. So now I didn't do any wiping, I just sat this in there. Now it's completely saturated on this end. Get it out of there. It's completely saturated on this end. She's dripping. This end's still got some life left in it. But look at that. I mean, this end down here was completely saturated, couldn't absorb anymore. But look up there. Uh, where it wasn't completely saturated. I mean, it brought it all back down to Still got, you know, uh, residue on it, but that did one fine job uh, cleaning that out. There's the new hose. Got it all tightened up. Runs underneath the engine. Over here to this side. And there's the new coupling. Oops, too much pressure. Little tip and trick here. It's using the drill, of course, but I was using my wrench to lift up on the back side and apply upward force just by prying up. So I was prying up on the wrench to push the drill through. It's really hard to get a good vantage point here and to push vertically when you can't get behind the drill. Using this combination wrench as leverage made all the difference. Right back here is the hole. I'm just gonna use my deburr tool to wrap it around in there. I can't get the drill in here with a oversized bit. So I'm gonna do something a little different here. We ended up drilling the holes because I know what'll happen if I didn't drill the holes, I'd probably never come back in and put clamps in. The old hose was in there just slopping around wherever it wanted to go. This is at least going to be better than that was. And hopefully in the meantime, we'll pick up some good clamps, just a single bolt clamp that we can wrap on there and use the same, same hole that we already drilled. <clears throat> right now what I'm doing is something a little interesting. It's another tip trick if you've never done this before. So I drilled the hole that was roughly big enough to allow a bolt in, quarter 20 bolt, uh, for when we installed the, the correct clamp. But in the time being, I have a tie wrap and then I have a nut. So I'm going to stick the tie wrap through the hole. Once it comes out the bottom, I'm going to go through the nut 
Then I'm gonna go back up through the hole and the nut's gonna keep it from pulling through the hole. Now you can use a bolt, whatever you want, whatever you got, piece of metal. Uh, this is what I'm gonna do and this will hold this hose in place until we can get those correct clamps. Uh, whew, okay, we got it. Time to kick the tires and light the fires. Let's see what this sucker's gonna do. Hopefully it doesn't blow oil everywhere. Here we go. Buttoned up one of the biggest leaks that we had on this old girl. As you saw, it was pretty well a steady stream every time the bucket lift arms were manipulated, which is no good. I'm pretty sure that was the biggest leak we have in there. We've got a few other drips here and there. Uh, nothing that I can tell that is major right now, or at least in this discovery. So hopefully we're going to consume a whole lot less hydraulic oil now. The old 843, she's ready to rock and roll and use less oil. If you uh, like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave your questions and comments in that section below. And don't forget to tickle that subscribe button on your way out. 843. She's a beaut. She's a beast. And she eats less oil now. Thanks for watching, everyone.